Uh, on the show today is a security expert and, of course, an ex-military veteran, Ambassador Dr. Roy Okidiebe. I hope I got that correctly. It's good to have you on the show, sir. Thank you very much. It's always an opportunity. Uh, ab absolutely. You must have been taking cognizance of what is really going on in the Southeast. Uh, well, in recent weeks, we uh, noticed the trend of uh, unknown government uh, killing police officers, military personnel, and uh, some other innocent civilians for whatever reason. I mean, this is becoming one too many. Uh, but, but this one that happened a few days ago is something that a lot of people are wondering how bad things have become. Uh, two military personnel who are actually uh, going for the traditional marriage rights in Imo State were killed in that manner. Uh, I don't know if you had the nerves to see that video, watch that video rather, uh, because some of us really, it wasn't easy, you know, you know looking at that, those pictures. Uh, but how, have, how bad are things have become right now? What is the security implication of all of this going on? Uh, to make things worse, I, I don't know if we have authorities really doing something about this. What is going on? Well, thank you, thank you. And um, as you have rightly um, spoken about all the things that have been happening, you see, there is this, um, this question mark on everybody's mind, you know, do we have a government in place? You know, if you really look at the way the uh, insecurity situation is just taking advantage of our civilian space at will and at random, um, if you go to anywhere in the Southeast now, I am not sure you can be comfortable to just um, do an event and people will start traveling in from outside the country from Lagos, from Abuja, to come down to the east. Everybody is now skeptical, considering their welfare, their security, anytime they are doing their journey management. OK, but for the east itself, uh, you know, when all these things started, we were, we were singing praises for them. You know, it's just like when Boko Haram started. The people, the Muslims and the Northerners, they were happy. They were singing praises to them until the whole thing matured into a uh, revelation that we have today. Now, if you look at the East, the IPOB, IPOB itself has come out to deny Nam Dikanu. They have mentioned that Nam Dikanu was their spokesman, but is no more acceptable in their enclave. They have come out to say they are not connected with the killings, that they are just agitating for the realization of the Biafra state. You know, but I, most times when I look at all of these things, I, I like to wonder and I ask questions. I say, are we sure we are not the one that we are grooming this monster to, to maturity? Now, if we look at the East in itself, when they started the no work on Monday, lockdown on Monday, you will see this um, violent person beating up and throwing away the, the market wares that the women are selling. Are these women not from the East? You know, are you not fighting for these women? Why not uh, approach dialogue and say, nah, pack your things away, no work today. But you just see them going violent as if the Easterners, the citizens of the East, are their uh, opponents. You know, you remember when they went to one of the a politician's house. They didn't meet him. They met the gate man. That gate man was beheaded. A gate man that is also from the east is, is opening gates and locking the gate for the a politician that you said is the criminal. Mm -hmm. Why did you behead the, the gate man? Is the gate man not from the east? Is he not one of those you were you are fighting for? So all the all the triangles detect that there is an agenda, you know, that is beyond IPOB. IPOB started all of these things, but I believe that it has gotten beyond IPOB. Because if you look at Boko Haram too, so many of the commanders that were dethroned and they wanted to kill them, they ran away and they enriched the, the, the multitude of uh, miscreants. And we began to hear bandits, bandits, bandits. You know, so definitely IPOB should have understood that advantage, it will be taken advantage of. And that is where we are now. 
for this video that you are talking about. Ambassador, uh, if you can hear me, but you know, there, there is no clear statement that. from uh, officials or, or the leaders of uh, this IPOB that you just uh, s talked about now to say that he, that we are the one behind these killings. None of them, none of the leaders have come out to say uh, that they're responsible for some of these killings. Is that deliberate? I mean, how, what do you make of that? Well, um, you see, they have a um, communication gap and they have um, inefficiency in clarity. If, you, if, if I'm a member of IPOB and we are not among the unknown government, if I'm a member of the Eastern Security Network and I'm not among the unknown government, what stops us to rat them out from their hideouts and present them before the public on video and say, confess if you are a member of IPOB or ESM? I think their denial is just is just a skeletal approach to the truth, you know, because if you are not and you declare that you are in charge of Eastern security and you are throwing away all the Fulani people that are bringing their castles to the bushes, you are killing the cows in violent videos and you are asking them to leave the East. So why can't you also penetrate those hideouts and deal with the unknown government? So your inability is culpability. You are immediately culpable for whatever denial you present. So I don't want to accept any denial from them. Your denial should be activated in coordinated actions to rout them out, disseminate them, and present them before the public. And that is what we expect from you. Well, Ambassador, you, you, you are once, um, I mean, uh, very active in the Nigerian military. As an ex-military officer yourself, uh, let's say he will wear the shoes, know where the pinches him from. So I, I believe that somehow a part of you really understand what is going on right now as far as the Nigerian military is concerned. How should this be tackled? Because it does look to some persons that this is still a joke. But when all of these started, a lot of people said uh, Southeast is one of the most peaceful regions in Nigeria. Yes, we agree, but can that be said now? Well, um, let me first address that video. Then we'll go to the ambience in the southeast, the security ambience. If you look at that video, that act was dastardly done. It was intentional. And it was displayed on video to mock the military. You remember so many times that a soldier is beaten on the road. You Nigerians have witnessed the repercussions. I am taking this to say that the current Nigerian military that we have is very disciplined and um, prepared to address issues of um, insults like this professionally. And um, I'm, 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 I'm surprised that no action has been taken so far. So in the TV appearances of um, security practitioners, especially those with a military background, I am also using this opportunity to plead that we should not discuss in depth on what the military is supposed to do. Because I am sure that those criminal elements are monitoring responses online to see the leeway to protect themselves. But I am sure that the military is digging deep and is trying to separate innocent persons from the real perpetrators before it will unleash the dragon. And I assure you, it's not going to be long. Those people that did that will be dealt with, revealed, and brought to the public glare. But the military is tactical not to attack innocent persons. And that is what is going on right now. So we are happy that we are seeing a disciplined military fronting this, um, this dastard act and this abuse. Now, if you go to the ambience in um, the, the east, uh, I, I have an office in Portacot, we have an office in Enugu, you know, in Abia, we have presence. In some of Anambra state, we have presence in my security company. Now, all that we have seen so far, uh, security um, patrolmen 
They are even having difficulty to move around, and they are from the east. You know, so are you saying that this insecurity situation in the east has not affected the economy, has not affected the relevance of those persons that are supposed to perpetrate dialogue, that are supposed to raise up strong arguments to the federal government to actually peaceably seek the Biafra that we are hoping for. So in the East right now, there is economic downturn because this is a great initiative that so many of them have done. Look at um, Kubana that just opened up a, a drink um, initiative. I think they have a name for the drink. If you bring in expatriates from abroad and other people, we could start export. But who will do that in an insecure situation? So I plead with those from the East to contribute to the agency, all the intelligence that they can gather, and make us put together a strong front that will not abuse the citizens, but go after the criminal element. Intelligence is needed. Thank you. I, I don't see that. Before I let you go, I noticed from some of my... Uh, some of the messages we're getting from the South is that there seems to be some kind of rank or, uh, in, in the rank and files of IPOB. I don't know if you are dealing with uh, some strange elements, you know, fronting as IPOB. Because several times, uh, uh, the uh, Imam Powerful, as the spokesperson of the proscribed IPOB, keep on saying that, hey, we are not responsible for this and that. Uh, are we looking at a case where it has spiraled to a point where we don't even know who we're even dealing with anymore? I mean, and again, should the military or the police, you know, go violence for violence? Because over time, we have realized that these things don't actually work. Okay. If you, if you look at the breaking of ranks that Ima Powerful is um, predicting, the breaking of ranks happen everywhere, you know? And you know why more than two or three times the military veterans wanted to come out for protest? As the National Secretary and the National Coordinator, Dr. Abbas, we took to make so many insults from the veteran community because we told them we can't go on protest now. Why? Because of the instability at those points. Now, those people you see that are breaking ranks from IPOB, they could be influenced by financial gratifications from political and um, um, big wigs. You know, they could be influenced by financial gratification. Uh, from MB Flex. So if we ask of these people, and if, if we look at the influence that could break the ranks, then it's going to be a failure on the part of government to be able to curtail it. Now, you mentioned that if they are not from the category of the IPOB, why are they still in relevance? Remember that if you look at Boko Haram, let's look, use near home, because if we use um, ISIS, that will be too far away. Now, if you look at near home, the Boko Haram themselves, they have internal disgruntlement and they kill the people that are against their regime. You know, we have had so many times that so many commanders were eliminated. Now, what they are doing now, they are harnessing the bandit community to work for them. So if IPOB is saying that there is no... Um, unknown government that is their membership, go after them. Then perpetrate intelligence delivery to citizens that have respect. Let those citizens pass this to the agency. Then you mentioned about the agencies, um, if they should go for violence against violence. Now, let me tell you something. The military and the police we have now, I am happy that they are exhibiting upgraded maturity. I am happy that they are not quick to take violence to violence. Because if you look at the need to stabilize the country towards 2023, mm -hmm. you will understand that the security agencies are actually directing mature stance 
so that they will be able to present themselves to right. whoever is coming okay. in 2023. Yeah, and I'm sure that they will be able to attack the situation properly and maturely. Another fantastic analysis again from Ambassador Roy Okida. He is a, an ex, of course, military veteran, security analyst. And thank you so much for being part of Security Lens once again. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And so, if you are traveling to the southeast or to any other region of Nigeria, we always appeal to you to be careful uh, until these issues are uh, really dealt with by uh, security for forces in Nigeria. Many thanks again for being part of Security Lens. Uh, we do hope you join us again, same time, uh, same station. Many thanks. I'm Victor Manike. Bye for now.